can I say that if these two countries unite in integrated by international trade, then the gap between two countries should be closed. But that didn't happen in Mexico. So that means the NAFTA or free trade, international trade did not help are not uh, the solution to help a country detriment. Brazil too, around uh, 30 percent range, and uh, um, some uh, other countries uh, similar to it. Okay, so this is very interesting uh, problem. How to actually catch up? How to move beyond uh, middle-income status? Growing high income. Okay. Uh, we have a graph for China. China is the uh, less than 5% of US, but now it's 30%, which is the same as Brazil. So if uh, China is whether it will keep catching up to go beyond 30%, reach 40%, or be like the Brazil, stagnating around this 30%, 40% range. Okay. What is your guess? I have a separate paper, so we can discuss that uh, if you are interested. My guess is China will keep catching up like uh, Korea or Malaysia style. Okay. Any question up to this couple of graphs? Okay. Then uh, the next one. So uh, the bold in based in Sicilian wrote a book saying that um, you got to join GDC, that it will help economic growth. But our couple of graphs show that that's not always the case. Okay? So they show some limitation of this uh, GDC argument. Okay? And the limitation comes from the fact that You cannot have all the high-end segment even if you join GDC. Okay. But Boldin's argument is that uh, he praised joining the benefit of GDC, saying that you don't have to develop all the segment. Okay. You can specialize in segment chain which you are best to do to do so. So in making Apple phone, this country produce different parts. That's the idea of their chain. So I don't have to do everything. I have the only specific product segment which is best for me. Okay. But still, there are debates because each value chain have a different implication. Some are more profitable, which guarantee high income, but some are less profitable, like uh, assembly using only labor. Where the design, which is done in California, is most profitable part. So if you specialize in not so profitable part, that's the case of middle income part. Okay. For example, Vietnam export, 30% Vietnam gross export is Samsung Galaxy assembled in Vietnam. But I guess you know that that doesn't mean all those money of export is not real value added in domestic economy of Vietnam because it is contain all the high tech part uh, which imported to Vietnam for assembly from made in uh, Korea or other, other part of the world. Okay, so Vietnam part is only mostly assembly, labor product, production using Vietnam labor. So you are getting only minor value out of the Galaxy phone. So that might be the case of uh, other countries who are catching up very slowly or stuck in middle income status too. Okay. So we'll show more details about this argument through several examples in this paper. Okay. So there are two possible alternative choices for emerging countries. Okay. So First one is that, okay, joining GDC will help me. So I follow the, uh, or choose comparative advantage of uh, my country 
uh, I try to upgrade slowly. Okay, but if you are more aggressive, like the past Korea, China, you should try more active trade policy or industry policy to keep moving into high-end segment. Okay, so I guess first one is case of Thailand, and first three is case of Korea or today China, I think. Okay, that's a lot of picture. And on, uh, also, uh, between these two alternatives, uh, we see some uh, linkages or uh, compromise. Okay? For example, we need to pursue very strong, aggressive uh, industrial policy to try to move domestically ready. So we should still open to international trade and uh, investment to learn from foreigners, foreign uh, partners. Okay? So you got to open to GDP, at least initial stage. Okay. On the other hand, for the choice one, just joining GDP does not guarantee upgrade. That's the point. You might be stuck in low value added activity without functional upgrade. Functional upgrade means going into R&D or marketing and brand management and so on. Okay. So uh, the, uh, the compromise or integration is that uh, we should find right and dynamic mode of engagement with GDP, with long-term goal of building, upgrading your own capability, means your more uh, domestic value added and domestic growth. That's the issue. So we'll, we'll discuss there how we can do this in terms of uh, how to uh, have a dynamic, highly changing mode of joining GDP. That's the key uh, issue. So uh, the earlier perspective is that uh, somewhat linearly, in other words, the more GDP, the better. But we can also discuss non-linearly, which is that you join GDP initially, but you need to go through intermediate stage of creating more domestic related. That means less GDP participate. Then after you build your domestic capability, you got to open again, join GDP. So it is uh, non-linear. More GDP, less GDP, or domestic GDP, more domestic GDP, then option now again, or globalization, international trade. Okay, this is experience of uh, some uh, successfully catching up economy. Okay, I will explain this uh, ideas using some examples. Okay. And such upgrading can be discussed in terms of this OEM, ODM, OBM uh, uh, mode. So OEM means own equipment manufacturing, like uh, uh, like Vietnam. They just do uh, assembly work. So all design, marketing is from abroad. Okay. ODM means like a box store. So I make the Apple phone in Taiwan. Okay. Or TSMC. So I making semiconductor chip, they do uh, production and design, but branded by U.S. company. Okay. Over me, we are doing everything, assembly, design, marketing. That's the case of the Samsung in semiconductor. Okay. So you can see uh, more high value added is OBM tool, less so is OEM tool using only labor-based uh, assembly product. So upgrading means you got to upgrade from OEM to ODM, ODM to OBM. That's the final goal, but that's not easy. After uh, example is uh, Steve Jobs, box phone for Apple is ODM. Some Korean and some other company doing also your own brand. So the key part is whether you have your own brand or not, or you just do production job without your own brand. That's the big way, simple way to differentiate these three modes of uh, uh, upgrade. Okay. So uh, uh, maybe I'll uh, put them give you some picture. Okay. So this case of one Korean uh, small medium-sized company. Uh, this is make uh, plush toys like uh, small toys, like uh, using using the. Disney brand or so on, 
and this country is the OEM. Okay, in other words, they don't have brands. They just produce toys, plush toys, uh, dolls uh, in Korea, 1980s. Okay, but uh, the eventual goal of this company by the founder was to become OBM. So he said, I want to sell my uh, toys with my own brand. So I want to become OBM. Okay, so he tried this to OBM from 1991, but it was not smooth transition, a lot of crisis. Sales keep declining after switch to the OBM. Why? Why it might happen like this, not a smooth progress? I have five or six years problem, they able to pick up sales. So answer is uh, written by here. So yes, this company used to have uh, only production experiences, so no brand no brand management experiences. So if when this company start selling some toys with their own brand, nobody willing to buy from this unknown brand. Okay. Also, they have no marketing experiences, no marketing know-how. So that's why sales did not increase. Further, existing brand company like Disney saying, oh, how can you dare try to sell your own brand? You should not do that. So they reduce. OEM orders to this country. So that's why they say sales decrease. Okay. But after five or six years of uh, difficult time, building up their marketing team, marketing network globally, they able to uh, pick up the sales and now become more uh, their own brand company. But here it says, Onion OBM out of 700. In other words, in the 80s, there are seven, more than 700 OEM makers in Korea. But only one company, this company become OBM. And about 10 become ODM. All disappeared. All the blue factory out of Korea, because Korea wage rate too high to do only o OEM. Okay. That's, that's example of the middle income threat. Middle income means that as, as you reach middle income, your wage rate keeps increasing. That means you should be able to produce more expensive goods so that you can pay to high averaging wage rate. Otherwise, you are losing competitiveness. That's the example of middle income segment. That means you have to move to high in the segment, such as own design production or own brand, brand manufacturing. And this case of the, in this uh, industry, Onium company becomes OBM, about less than 10 become OTM. Okay. Cyber, uh, uh, similar stories to other companies in my previous uh, papers. So, Ura Uraworld is uh, competing with the TY in USA. This company become now global brand owners in plush toys. And there are some other cases who are trying to uh, uh, upgrading from OEM to OBM, competing against some uh, incumbent uh, companies. Hankook Chinaware uh, this year was comp catching up against Westfield in USA. Because some of you know this famous brand. Like a knock is a, a liquid container in the street, competing against Tupperware. Okay, so, uh, these are the cases of uh, uh, example of o upgrading to global OBM company, although they are uh, SMEs. So why this company you will, you will have a difficult in this upgrading process? Upgrading is not easy. Se several counter attack from incumbent company. So what are words I, I mentioned? Existing incumbent company cancel the order OEM order to this company, saying that you should not try to become OBM. You should just keep becoming a OEM production maker. If you uh, keep going there, they say that 
IPR litigation in intellectual property rights, saying that you are copying my patent, you are copying my design. Okay, so they have go through many uh, IPR litigation. If you lose from this litigation, if you do not sell in the market, then you go bankrupt. Okay, so it's counter theft. Then another way of counter theft from incumbent is price cut dumping. Okay, so they reduce their selling prices so that uh, you will have trouble in uh, selling at uh, uh, at the market. So price competition by lowering down their own prices to kill you out of the market. That's why you have to prepare for this possible counter attack from incumbent company. So you should get uh, this company get try insurance for uh, good liability. Sometimes registering as different name for the U.S. market, and they did the R and D on during night time for various <laughs> ways to be prepared for the possible response from incumbent. Otherwise, you must fail in this uh, transition from OEM to OBI. So I have another game from uh, Brazil uh, in terms of foodware. Brazil has one of the biggest produce of making foodware uh, in early days. Okay, And we see there are two types of uh, firms in southern Brazil, south of uh, San Paulo. One is dependent group. So who are closely integrated with the value chain, but they are subordinate to purchasing activity of uh, large global multinational, but they are doing this thing low end segment, uh, in other words, the product assembly. Okay? But they eventually all disappear because their wage rate keep rising, become more expensive than possibly like uh, China. So all OEM orders to making these fuels went to China out of Brazil. As Brazil wage rate become more expensive than, than from China. So they used to doing some production job, but eventually lost the product. So these are majority of the numbers of the companies. So only small up to three companies pursued independent uh, strategy. So they stopped applying to MNC buyer, try their own brand. So they try to upgrade in high-end segment by designing investment, production improvement, new market niches, and their own brand. Okay, so uh, directly trading in their own brand and design. Okay, and they are those who survive. This competition need uh, other uh, cheaper production sites such as from China. So this shows the growth to export by Brazil and this region in, the, in southern Brazil. Okay. So they are doing very well. But since 2005, their export keep decreasing. Sharp decrease. Okay. With rise of price, because the OEM orders went out of this, this area in Brazil to China. Okay. But these three companies, these are named three companies, their sales keep increasing, different from the other majority of group who remain dependent upon the global value chain. They are the who try to become OBM with their own investment in R&D, innovation, and learning. Okay. And this shows the trend of patent filed by these two companies. That means these companies are not just doing production, but they're also doing R&D, innovation efforts. And they showed up in the number of patents filed by these companies. Okay. So as I mentioned, this uh, doing OBM means you are doing assembly, production, design, marketing, but you can add R&D or innovation. OEM mode means you are doing only assembly. Okay, this might not be long-term solution, as long as 
because your wage is actually increasing, then you you are losing effectiveness in just doing uh, cheap wage based production. Okay. Then that's the case with Linux. So that's why I'm saying uh, this dynamic pattern of uh, GBC participation. First, you got to be in. You got to join GBC. Then out. Then out means that less GBC means that you are increasing more domestic territory. You're building up something more in domestic territory, R&D, design, or brand. So after you build up your capability in those high-end uh, XBC, so you got the option again, looking for global uh, 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 market. Okay, so it's a learning loop. Any stage, in, out, in again. Okay, so first stage you engage first to learn in subordinate model like OEM, FDI. Okay, then you got to have time to be independent, as the uh, three company Brazil. Then you got to engage again GBC with the competence. So that means uh, a need to have uh, some form of national ownership venture. Otherwise, building some capability is not that much. Taiwan is similar example. Taiwan used to be highly dependent upon multinational companies, FDI. Much more than in the case of Korea. But eventually, Taiwan created the locally owned company. That's why Taiwan income level is now high-end, uh, high uh, high-income level. So now they're still highly integrated with the GBC. This is also a dynamic pattern. Okay. We have a measurement of your GBC participation. This is the most uh, widely used measurement. Uh, this graph is showing FDA, means share of foreign bill added in export. So when you export, not all of those values are your value added. Something is reflecting something you imported for production. So, for example, Vietnam exporting Samsung Galaxy phone, but many value added is imported into Vietnam for assembly. So many chips, memory chips, some uh, uh, um, camera module, all imported, all foreign value added, not Vietnam's domestic value added. So this shows your degree of GBC participation, or how much you're relying upon foreign bill added. Okay, so this is one of the typical measure of GBC participation, we call it backward participation, backward linking. Okay, so this is a uh, Korean uh, trend. So early days, 70s, keep increasing. Because Korea joined GBC, import a lot of from Japan, Germany, yeah. High tech part, so use only Korean labor to do export. But very interesting, from 1980s, this will keep declining. Why? Because less and less foreign bread is used. Because this part, foreign imported part, now become domestically supplied by domestic Korean producers. So this is the increasing domestic value added, decreasing foreign value added. For example, Hyundai Motors, very strong brand uh, 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 makers in Russian market. In early days, Hyundai make its own brand, but inside is all Japanese, Japanese engine, Japanese dance music. So during 80s, Hyundai localized engine production and dance music. So this is a cheap degree. But now all Korean companies become their own multinational or globalized. So this increases again. For example, Hyundai has used their factory only in Korea, but now factory in Russia, US, many parts of the world. So, uh, uh, Hyundai uh, export use some more materials produced in their foreign factory. So this rate increases again. Okay, so this is what I'm saying. In, out, in. Dynamic pair.
and this is based on the I calculate this based on some formulas. I achieved similar trend in Taiwan. So I see earlier part decreasing, then increase. This is our part. Okay. Then this is China. China was increased GDP, but China keep decreasing because China like localizing everything made in China. Okay. So similar pattern. So important part is the declining part, which means we're increasing domestic value. Okay, but China has about uh, 10 to 15 years later than uh, Korea in terms of experiencing decreasing. China started 2000, that's decrease. Korea was uh, around mid 80s. This is exactly where Korea was facing problem of middle-income trap rising wage rate for your segment is not that high end so trouble so by decreasing FBA or increasing domestic value chain we're able to overcome middle income trap problem okay. so seeing similar trend happening in China we can predict that China will be also overcoming middle income trap because they are increasing more domestic value as well this is the overall trade data for rival graph for just automobiles. And this is Korea, Hyun mostly Hyundai Motors keep decreasing, nothing. So increase again. So Hyundai is now practically abroad, globalized. So many interaction between home base in Korea and foreign bases. So this increase again. Okay. But this is China. China is still declining decreases. So that means uh, China keep localizing many uh, intermediate parts for local production. So as you mentioned, made in China. Okay, but this is case of uh, Thailand keep remaining very high, three percent, because in Thailand autom automakers the large scale, but all Japanese only, Toyota or Honda. So they keep relying on Japanese high tech part engine transmission. So they are. FBA don't decline, don't decrease, but keep remain high. So it means keep depend upon Japanese supply of high tech part. Okay. So that's the limitation of Thailand auto sector. They keep depend upon Japanese high edge part. So Thailand is catching up relatively slow or possibly uh, middle income trap. So gold in school. He prays, oh, look at Thailand. They are doing very well. But that's too simple story for me. Because Thailand is, scale is okay, but volume is big, but how much is domestic allergies is not that much. Not that much compared to case China or uh, Korea. Okay, so that's why Thailand catching up speed somewhat slow. Let me go back to earlier graph. Thailand. Thailand is still growing, but uh, this slope is almost flat, very slow pace compared to Malaysia as well. Okay. Thailand was higher than Korea in early 70s, early 80s, almost similar cases. Korea was below Malaysia in catch-up time. Left catch-up, small slow catch-up. There are many theories. One theory is that this uh, uh, not no upgrading or slow upgrading in GDP. Thailand is doing some upgrading, but so much slow. Okay, they are not that aggressive. Okay, Hyundai Motors used to go to joint venture, so they have been production for Ford or Japanese. Then Hyundai said, "Okay, I'm going to be independent." So they start selling their own brand, keep localizing high tech part. That's aggressive risk taking. They didn't happen tried in Thailand. That's the difference. Okay. Any question? Back to this part. So I have uh, events from many countries, Brazil, Korea, Thailand, and so on. Yeah.
So uh, we can have a picture of this uh, long-term trend of per capita income in horizontal axis and this FBA, foreign bill added in plus export. So uh, there should be a period of declining. Then it will increase again as we become high income countries. So all high income countries are fully opened up. They are actually engaged in GDC. But to become like that, we must have some period of building up local value chain. And I have some more graph of this FBA for the uh, other country. So this is the uh, yeah. Thailand, Malaysia, very high. Indonesia, very low. Indonesia is uh, still many resource-based economy. They have many rich minerals, so uh, tends to be somewhat lower than uh, neighboring countries. Malaysia has some experience of uh, some declining period, not much, so they have some experience of increasing some value chain. Yeah. Malaysian success is not much to make it to. They are doing better in terms of uh, exporting some resource-based manufacturing, such as palm oil and uh, rubber products, textile products. So they are semiconductor sector is indexed to be middle income step. It's only low or middle value added, not much high value added. And this case of uh, Mexico, highly integrated GDC with uh, uh, through F NAFTA, Northern American Free Trade Area with uh, Canada, Mex USA. So they remain, remain high. That means keep depend upon foreign suppliers in high tech part. So they're creating jobs, but not much profit or value added. So that's why, as mentioned, Mexico is a case of uh, keep uh, not catching against USA. Brazil is lowest because Brazil has more natural resource sector than uh, Mexico, which has heavily uh, manufacturing oriented. So this uh, the graph depends upon your industrial structure. If you are more manufacturing, so remain high. If you are more natural resources, uh, tend to be lower. So we can summarize the salary effect with the DVC graph. First, more mineral resource oriented economy tend to be lower than manufacturing economy. That's why some Southeast Asian economies show high GBC participation than some of Latin American economies. Yeah. But still, this Southeast Asian economy like Malay, Thailand still needs to keep more domestic or local value added. Yeah. In contrast, Latin American economy may need to further increase participation in GBC. In other words, making mining more like manufacturing promoting more processing segment so they can create more domestic value added. So that's what happened in Korea from GBC participation and to more local uh, value chain. Yeah. So that's the uh, uh, main part I've named but uh, uh, any, any uh, question or should we go to next? Please you can uh, mm, ask me any question. Yeah. I see some from China. Yeah, any 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 uh, comment? Son Nan, you're from China? <laughs> uh, yes, I came from, uh, I come from China. Okay. Uh, I've, oh, I've, I've 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 have a uh, I have a question from Avalo, Carlos. Uh, yes, uh, hello. Uh, <clears throat> I have a comment about um, the Latin American economy. It's a, it's a fact that uh, there is an issue about the manufacturing in mining, but it, it, it's it's because, how to say, they 
most of Latin American countries is they don't have a, an industry specifically talking. They they are like okay, I I contract, I have a contract with a how to say with a very big company about mining, and they just uh, they just take all my 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 resources from my country. But uh, for for that reason, I believe uh, that uh, that fact that you were mentioned there is is true. <laughs> It's a reality. Mm -hmm. But uh, in Latin American countries, a country being a little better is Chile. Chile reach around 50% US. So I look at Chile as an example of possibly going out of middle income trap. And they are not doing that based on manufacturing, but based on some uh, resource-based sectors, like uh, um, the salmon or many vegetables or wood product. So they are based on resources, but they are making hybrid edges. And they are leading exporters of Chile. So it's uh, not manufacturing based, but resource based catching up. Okay. So the same point is that how much you are creating domestic value. Okay. Okay, I got it. Chonnan, you, uh, you want to say something? Uh, okay. Uh, I know the pandemic, uh, 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 because of the COVID-19, uh, uh -huh. chi China plan to uh, invest, invest more in domestic industry, I guess, because uh, the international trade is, uh, uh, the international trade has some obstacles. So, yeah. but, yeah. but, um, but, Actually, I think it's not a very wise way to stop some international trade, but the government have to do it. And they even um, stop, uh, supply, uh, stop supplying some electricity to some districts. Have you ever heard of them? Yeah, 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 yeah. So after this US-China tension and COVID-19, uh, each country is are kind of forced to realize, rely more on domestic resources. That means this graph is keep declining. That's happening in China. I graph to China is keep declining because China are forced to do so because US uh, trying to um, the reduce any high tech supply to China. So China have to have no choice to rely on more dom domestic resources. So China have to do. But it's not good for whole economy. We should be more open interest, but is kind of a suboptimal. So all already going into less efficient equilibrium in a sense. <laughs> That's why now facing many disruption in DBC. Yeah? Many things have become more high value, high prices, stagflation, inflation. So all world is moving out of efficient equilibrium to more uh, somewhat inefficient equilibrium. It's, I'm I'm sorry worry about worrying about this world situation going going worse. <laughs> in a sense. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Mm. And oh, is it Ima, you have a comment? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, after heard from Jan's comment, I think it's also interesting about nowadays because of pandemic, you know that some developed countries so uh not uh it's going it's going to be uh how to say it? the globalization like they the want to yeah, yeah they want to be dependent uh with their domestic resources yeah. uh so what do you think what's your point of view about uh global value chain in the future is it is it okay to to a country um like uh, participate in global solution or is it okay for uh, uh, for them to like increase their participation in global solution in the future because of uh, personally from my point of view I, I haven't read any papers before but from my uh, personal point of view or when a country is uh, like uh, more dependent to uh, another countries that means that uh, their their national supply is more volatile uh, what's your perspective and point of view. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So that's one of the most critical issue facing every economy. In the past, we are living in the world of 
free trade globalization. So that means like like uh, Apple Mode, you outsource all parts from abroad at the cheapest price and just assembled it in cheap country with a low wage rate and you export globally. That's the globalization mode. So that mode become now very uh, risky in this pandemic period. <laughs> also US-China conflict. So many countries trying to do more on their own territory and that's not optimal. <laughs> because that means you are ending up using higher cost to produce things. So I'm very concerned about this uh, whole world going into uh, uh, not so optimal state because of this geopolitical tension issue. So in some critical alternative is more your own resource-based development. So whatever industry should use more domestic resources, that makes sense to focus on such industry. In, in the case of uh, uh, Malaysia, like uh, rubber, Malaysia a lot of so making rubber products like condom and so they are very successful export sector of Malaysia. Also palm oil. Malaysia has many palms and they produce palm oil. Palm oil is process, almost manufacturing. They become most interesting, important export sectors of Malaysia. Compared to Indonesia, both countries export palm, but Indonesia export more crude, unprocessed palm, palm oil. But Malaysian case is more or less processed with own Malaysian brand. So that's the better alternative in this pandemic, post-pandemic period. You got to have something based on more domestic resources. That's better or safe alternative than just relying on global value chain. <laughs> so whole world is changing a little bit in this <laughs> uh, post-pandemic, post-China-US uh, tension. I see some Korean name. Any uh, comment from Korean student? Lee jong -yeon? If are you Korean? Oh, sorry, uh, professor. I think Tony yes. Martina has his hand up. She raised her hand. Oh, Marcella. Okay. Hi, Hi professor. Um, I have a question. I'm from South America as well. I'm from Brazil, and uh, it was quite oh. nice to see some study and some examples about that. Oh. And uh, I'd like to ask um, uh, how GVC uh, help um, uh, developing countries to enhance economic growth? Because mm. as I see Brazil as an example, even though we are not like so into GVC, we still mm. struggling to get like economic growth. And um, I would like to understand because uh, as far as I know, it um, helps the productivity, but in mm. some countries that it affects uh, the employment. Mm. So, yeah, yeah. So Malaysia, the Brazil is a big country, so we have uh, the big uh, resource sectors. Uh, we have also at the same time big manufacturing sectors. So manufacturing in Brazil is doing very well. And so if you put all average, GVC, Malaysia, the Brazil is somewhat low, but if you pick up only the manufacturing sector, Brazil will be very high, almost uh, 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 will be lower than Mexico. But in Brazil cases, key issue is how to make more things domestically or how to increase domestic value added. Okay, so manufacturing in Brazil still a lot depend upon multinational. So it's okay, you got to open to multinational and to learn from them. But final issue is you create more spin-off local companies after you learn from MEC. And that's the part Brazil should be uh, improved and maybe learn from China. China also invites many MNC, but they learn from MNC, but create their own more local company. Okay. That's, the, that's not easy. Okay. That takes a lot of effort, coordination between public sector, government, and private sector efforts, and so on. And uh, that's a difficult part, facing many emerging countries. So you got to open. But how to create more domestic thing? That's the tricky part. So all high-income countries are open economy, but just opening doesn't guarantee you make high-income country. It has to be strategically well planned. <laughs> That's the difficult part. So there are many countries catching up 
so much low than expected. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So, where is uh, Lee Zhang Yan? You want to say something? You, 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 you're Korean, right? Uh, yes, I'm Korean. You, you based yes. in Korea now or in Russia? Uh, pardon? I based in Seoul now or in Russia? I'm in Russia. I'm in Moscow. Oh, oh okay, okay. So, any comments? Um, just I heard about very interesting things, mm -hmm. but still, but so far I don't have any question. Maybe the end of the lecture. Okay. Okay. Any others? Oh, we have a comment from Jin Jin uh, Jin Jani. Okay. Uh, okay, Professor. Uh, what topics do you think are important for the development development of GVC? Uh, you know, in this environment, the economy and uh, globalization are taking a huge toll. So, what are the uh, important issues you think? Uh, about the topic, agenda, something like uh -huh. that. Well, as you can see from my uh, topic today, uh, if this, so you got to be open GBC, that's the kind of basic thing, but how to, which position GBC you will be specializing, that's the issue. In other words, if you making phone, mobile phone, there are many component activity. And Apple headquarters in California, they only do design, but they outsource everything abroad. And that means designing is most lucrative or profitable segment. And Korea produced uh, uh, some chip for Apple phone and some uh, workers in China or Thailand do the assembly. So which is this, which part you wanna specialize in out of this? complex matter of value chain. That's, imp that's important. You specialize, specialize in low value as the part, or you specialize in high value as the part. Okay. That determine your income level. Okay. And initially all emerging countries start from low end part, easy part. So if you have to move into a little bit next end part, a little bit high end part, on the long term and dynamically. That's the issue. Okay. If you have semiconductor, we start from packaging, fabricating, design from low to high. Okay. Korea, Samsung started from low end segment, but keep increase. Malaysia reached up to middle, like the fabricating. But Malaysian company, rely on MNC for designing and part, the high end part. And that's difficult. So up to middle end part is okay as a, 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 a emerging countries, but uh, if you wanna uh, join high income status, you you try to think of how to keep moving into high end high end segment. Maybe we'll have a more discussion after I uh, finish this. Uh, uh, oh, there's some somebody in chatting room. Oh, Marcel, okay, I am sorry. Okay, so, uh, let me turn to uh, this slide again, okay? Okay, so it's good. we have good discussion in the middle, then I'll uh, uh, try to finish up the uh, remaining part and we have another, another time of discussion. So, so we discussed the issue of uh, upgrading in value chain. So now let me turn to linkage between this value chain and innovation. So how to create more value chain? That's the issue. And the answer is that you have to have more innovation or better national invent system. Okay, that's the uh, new part. Okay. You have to more local knowledge. That can be a basis for more local value added. That's the main argument in the second part. So um, in Schumpeterian economics, Interest economy who talk about creative disruption or innovation. 
important. So uh, in situation economics, key concept is something called rational you know, system or simply NIS. Uh, Rumba is one of the uh, uh, senior scholar in this Sipetarian economic school. And he defined NIS as an uh, element and relationship which interact in production, diffusion, and use of knowledge. And that is rooted inside the board of a nation state. So NIS is about efficient in acquisition, creation, diffusion, and utilization of knowledge. So our basic idea is that if you have a better NIS, you'll have better innovation, higher competitiveness, and so more economic growth. So simply, Simpletarian think that your NIS determine your economic growth, economic performance. Okay. So although we talk about value chain DVC, uh, how to do more domestic DVC is up to each country's inner system. That's the argument. So I explain this idea. Okay. So uh, I wrote uh, this book also in Chinese languages about uh, Irwin system at national level, sector level, fund level, how to do more, uh, build up better innovation system, that's the issue. And that's the key to go beyond middle income trend. Okay. So key, uh, key variable in this innovation system uh, idea is that variable called cycle time of technology. What is this? It means how quickly technology or knowledge is changing over time. So cycle time is speed of change in knowledge basis technology. So my key argument is that to catch up, you got to specialize in so cycle technology based sectors, such as IT, information technology. Because in so cycle sectors, all knowledge become quickly obsolete, outdated. That means incumbent knowledge become quickly less important. So latecomers can do something quickly without much relying on incumbent knowledge. And also cycle means also very uh, frequent innovation. New knowledge tended to open more frequently. Okay, so it's high growth prospect. So knowledge become quickly out, outdated means low entry barrier. So you don't have to study all those old knowledge, you can just study uh, recent knowledge, that's enough for you to make entry into such so cycle sector. But it has great opportunity to growth because of high frequent innovation. So that's why uh, you got moving into so cycle such as IT. And that's the key experience of Korea, Taiwan, and University of China, all these economy making success by moving into, specializing into, so cycle sectors such as IT. Okay, so I explain this idea. Okay, so how can you make a major cycle time? It is based on patent. So when you have a new innovation, you file patent. But when you file patent, you have to cite other patent. Like when you write articles, you have to cite other people's articles. So here 10 means, you are citing 10 year old patent, patent filed 10 years ago. So the more old number means that old knowledge is still important. But this is each economy's average cycle time. This is Korea time getting short and short. That means their patent life cycle is very short. So they, so in IT, after two, three, four years, all the patent become useless. So technology already change very quickly. Okay, that's what I mean by low entry barriers in IT. And Korea time become every cycle time become short and short compared to high income countries, European countries or long cycle sector, which is good. High entry barriers, more profitable, more more profit because of high entry barrier. Okay, but Brazil, Argentina, uh, also so long cycle. So long cycle for emerging countries, uh, given high entry barriers, it's not easy to make commercial success. Or you're part of a European dominated uh, investment system. Okay. Whereas 
uh, if you are gonna seek niches, your own uh, entry point, you better target society. Means you you rely less depend upon foreign knowledges, somebody else's knowledge, because their knowledge becomes soon outdated. And that's advantage of society, but also high gross cost. Okay, so that means IT easy to enter, easy to catch up quickly. But if you target bios, drug, material, the long cycle, even if you file some patent like Brother Argentina, it doesn't need to commercial success. You are doing only some uh, making patent, writing articles and so on, but not much commercial success because the commercial activity all dominated by European income bank, high entry level. To make success in bio medicine, it takes a long, long time. High entry level. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is another major you know, system called uh, localization of knowledge creation diffusion. That means uh, this shows that uh, each country's national level self citation. So, aim means. When you file patent, when you cite, how much you cite patent owned by same nationality. So high income country level is 8% means uh, they almost 8% is self citation. Remaining they cite patent owned by other country. So high is good. <coughs> but <coughs> in the case of uh, other middle income countries all remain low, but catching up happened in Korea, Taiwan over time. So they reach almost the same level as high income countries. That means they are able to build up more local knowledge bases. So this is one aspect of technical catching up. Okay. And there is a linkage between this show cycle and this knowledge creation because uh, if you go to show cycle, you don't have to rely on uh, income and knowledge. And, and that means you have a higher chance of quickly increasing more local knowledge. Because you don't have to uh, rely, less, uh, rely less on income and knowledge. So there is connection between going into show cycle and increasing more local knowledge base. And it happened around the same time. And also you need to domestic value chain or less foreign value chain. So uh, mm, this shows uh, uh, local knowledge citing increase rapidly. And that's the, when Korea decrease FBO. So this graph shows the idea that uh, this local knowledge creation is basis for creating more local domestic value added. Okay. So that means more local innovation effort can be the basis for more creating more domestic value added. Okay. So in the paper I run simple uh, statistical metric regression. Uh, so try to find out determinant FBA as function of local knowledge. So minus means that uh, more local knowledge, less FBA, or more domestic value chain. DBA means domestic value added. F means foreign value added. So uh, to increase domestic value added, you got to have more local knowledge. So dependent value is FBA. So this regression shows the linkage from local knowledge to local value chain. So, in the past, in first half, I talk about importance of more domestic value chain. How to achieve that? You got to have more local innovation effort. Okay. And this uh, the proof uh, is done by this uh, statistical exercise. Okay. So, basically, we prove that any shape or in, out, in hypothesis is for the GBC participation. So at the initial stages, more GBC is needed 
for learning from outside. Okay? But to upgrade functionally from OEM to ODM, OVMs, that requires some effort to seeking independence from GBC, from the foreign dominated GBC, by building up more domestically. After build domestically, you got to integrate back into GBC. That's why we have an in out in uh, non linear or dynamic GBC participation. Okay? So, this FPBA value graph in Korea, Taiwan, recently China consistent with this hypothesis of a non linearity. Uh, increasing FPBA early period, uh, low income stages, then declining and catching up stages, increase again in most recent period. So, the regression I just showed proved correlation between local knowledge creation and domestic value added. So, that means building local innovation system is key to upgrading and local value creation. So, our contribution is, contribution is to confirm linkage between innovation system variable, such as knowledge, to GBC variable. So the whole picture is that relocalization is linked to economic growth. And this uh, linkage from local knowledge to economic growth is that more local knowledge leads to more local value added, then leads to domestic economic growth. Okay. Then we'll also talk about this quality between going into short cycle to local knowledge creation. Going short cycle means uh, less is to rely on foreign knowledge, so more chance to increasing local knowledge uh, creation, and also eventually uh, more domestic or local value added. Okay. So uh, roughly, I show the linkage from innovation variable and GBC variable. Okay. Then we can discuss some. Uh, policy implication. So, um, so we have to go beyond the myth of GBC, saying that simply more GBC the better. I think this is somewhat naive or a simple view, because uh, more important thing is how to create more local value added and more stable jobs. Because in the case of Brazil food sectors, just depend upon GBC doesn't guarantee you jobs. Jobs all gone to other countries, which of course people will do. But GBC is still important as an initial learning channel. Okay. So I'm not saying don't join GBC, but I'm saying join GBC. That's a must. But, uh, but you got to break the chain by MEC to create your own GBC. All successful catching up involved local national value chain, which is needed for more long-term supportable local job. Otherwise, uh, multinationals always volatile. They keep moving country to country, look for cheaper, cheaper wages. That's why we cannot rely on MNCs for long-term growth. We have to create more uh, local, uh, locally owned companies, spin-off companies. Okay. So, we can talk about three paths, three alternatives. First, you join GBC, expect gradual upgrading, uh, stability of GBC. That's the case of Thailand. Thailand is doing okay, just only uh, somewhat slow, also steady speed, steady speed, okay? Option two is the opposite. You join GBC, but you try separation and seek more radical upgrading for independence. That's the case of uh, some Korean cases, Taiwan also nowadays in China. Another one is no upgrading, gradual dying away or kicked out. That happened to some company in Brazilian food air sectors. Okay. Thailand uh, is not kicked out. Thailand still with uh, Japanese companies, still upgrading. That means Thailand is successful in providing more high-skilled labor and uh, some cluster. So Japan cannot move, easily move out of Thailand. So they built already many efficient clusters. So uh, 
different from who they are sex and Brazil, company cannot quickly move out of Thailand. And that means Thailand is doing a uh, certain degree of success, being able to hold Japanese company. So Thailand also shouldn't uh, upgrade in skills and labor forces. So Japan needed it. They have built it for many, many periods. So that's the uh, fact that holding uh, uh, Japanese automakers inside Thailand. But there's a limitation in terms of degree of uh, profit rate. Okay? Because bigger profit is still going to Japanese partner. Okay? Okay. So the, answer, the detailed picture might be dependent upon sectors. Some sectors, maybe this uh, gradual upgrading is still uh, not bad choices, still a uh, decent choices. But some cases, uh, some passive mode of GBC might not be the only solution. You might face some gradual dying away, like a Korean case is so flush toys. Out of 700 OEM makers, they're all gone. Okay. All. So some sector quickly moving one country, one country. But some other sector, that's not easy. Okay. The sectoral differences in terms of this uh, mobility of uh, multinational. It's up also up to how much uh, good services, good labor force are supplied locally. Then, uh, how to achieve this option two? Okay, is uh, in other words, uh, how to make this functional upgrading happen? First, you want to have a plan, will to upgrade. Okay, I want to be independent. I want to create more local value added. Okay, so uh, uh, that means uh, you have to have plan to uh, being less depend upon or move out of a hierarchical mode. Hierarchical means MNC is on top, they are the boss, you are listening to the boss. That mode is called hierarchical mode. Uh, you, are, you have a plan to move that out of that mode to more market mode, more horizontal mode, where you have more bargaining power. It depends upon your own skill, something unique to you. So you have more bargaining power, you get better deal with the MNC. And you have to have a specific plan will. Okay. Then also important local ownership, local control. Okay. Without this, nothing can be accumulated. And this might not happen automatically. So there's room for public policy, industrial police, intimation by government okay, to promote more locally owned companies. That has actively done by uh, China in uh, the Chinese company, invite the MNCs, but they also uh, work hard to promote locally owned companies. Okay. Also in the past, Taiwan or Korea also too. So you got to have a firm strategy and public policy industrial policy to build build capabilities to overcome barriers. Very means like uh, IPR dispute, patent dispute, design dispute, and and the dumping by incumbents. Dumping means uh, price cut, order cut. So diverse room for public policy such as industrial policies, private public partnership to do R and D or innovation, or if you have a big conglomerate style, business group structures, we have uh, more room for uh, helping each other among uh, sister companies, among help, among affiliates to try something new and build more synergy among affiliates. That's the one way to build uh, capability, optimize resource uh, more efficiently. Okay. So, uh, Bashiba or Seche, thank you, Obrigado, Gracias. Okay, so that's my lecture, and uh, let's have some uh, discussion. Okay, question and answer. Okay. So we have around 24. 
percent. So you are from all these diverse countries or nationalities. So okay. Anybody from Africa? Yeah, I'm from Ghana. Okay. Ghana. Oh, okay. Say I'm something. I'm from Nigeria. Oh, Nigeria. Who, who is? Yeah. Oh, Maryam. Oh. Yes. Okay. Yeah, Nigerian cases. I have to say, we have a lot of petrol oil resources. Okay. Yeah. So they see how to create more value chain in oil. So rather export crude oil, you have to have plan to export more processed oil. So build more refinery, process inside Nigeria, then export. Then that's more profitable business. Korea, no oil is at all. So Korea export a lot to Africa, Middle East, because Korea has built refineries oil. We import crude oil. Process in Korea, export back to Africa or Middle East. Okay. That's what I mean by increasing domestic value. Okay. So, same for any mineral resources. Rather than export crude, unprocessed palm oil, like Indonesia, we got to export it as processed palm oil, which means more value. That's case in Malaysia. So neighboring countries a big difference in terms of this palm oil uh, sector. And Malaysia has a plan, will to create more. So Malaysia acquired UK company who are the brand owner. Malaysian government has said the company acquired in London stock market British owned brand owner company in palm oil. So we have a plan. It doesn't happen by market forces. That's the beginning of Malaysian palm oil sector now. Mm -hmm. Very successful export sectors in Malaysia. Uh, professor, I have another question. <laughs> yes, Marcella. Um, so um, you said like um, developing countries could like join uh, GVC to uh, accumulate knowledge and mm -hmm. later produce their own companies. Mm -hmm. And I was wondering again, because uh, comparing to Brazilian situation, yes, like it's quite difficult to um, acquire like their own companies when we are like a, a peripheral capitalist country and we can mm -hmm. be suppressed by the competition of big corporations like from United mm -hmm. States or even mm. China. So I yeah, was yeah. wondering how like to overcome this process, mm. how a country that is like not as huge as China could uh, mm -hmm. have their own, um, mm. I do not know, their own, own corporation yeah, for yeah. it, or yeah. their own. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I mean, the Brazil used to be a the successful uh, catching in terms of uh, strong intervention government industrial policies. You have one of the biggest European bank called uh, BNDS, we have many uh, experience before with uh, state-owned businesses. China used to have many state-owned businesses. That's uh, become an engine of economic growth in the domestic-owned uh, uh, business. So, uh, Brazil has resources. We got to have a more strong plan. And depending upon the, the attitude of government, sometimes the Brazil goes to free market style, sometimes goes to interventionist. So I think free market style, doesn't help very much in terms of building local capability and local ownership. So you got to have some intervention by government. And Chile cases, Chile famous example success of the um, salmon is all done by public effort, Chile foundation. Okay, so that means uh, you got to break the chains, <laughs> break chains by MNCs or so You have to leave it alone to market forces. Just uh, keep going as business as usual. You got to have some intervention, some disruption. That's I, I mentioned the Malaysian cases. They acquired in stock market UK company to have a palm oil brand owned company. That's the beginning of Malaysia's palm oil sector. It's a very uh, drastic measure. Acquire UK company with Malaysian state uh, money. 
I see. Thank you. Yeah. Could we have time? Let me briefly uh, talk from other PowerPoint. In the case of Chile and Malaysia, I have a, a lengthy story. I'll do quickly. We have some more discussion. Let's, uh, let me try to uh, just share the screen. Let me see. So you see this new PowerPoint? It's about how Chile, Malaysia escaping the middle income trap using resource-based development by industrial policing and local ownership. Okay. So I'll do quickly and we have some discussion. So uh, Sam will discuss middle income trap. Okay, so this graph will discuss. So graph discuss. So uh, there are some signs that Chile, Malaysia getting out of trap, not by manufacturing, but by resource-based sectors. Okay. And the leading sectors are not manufacturing. In Malaysian case, not electronics, but palm oil, rubber, and petroleum products, all based on Malaysia own resources. Chile, not copper, but fruit, wine, salmon, forest-based wood products. This success not based on free market, but by active industrial policy for capital building in vertical value chain based on local ownership. Local ownership again, important factor. Okay. So this shows the graph of this catching up against US level. So 40% is the uh, important bar. You have to go beyond that to cross the uh, to escape trap. And Chile, Malaysia just escaped the trap become about 50% US, different from Mexico, used to be higher than 40, but now below uh, Thailand. So these two countries are possible example of uh, new groups of countries who are going beyond middle income trap. And not based on manufacturing, but based on resource-based sectors. Okay. So these are key sectors of Chile and Malaysia. They are not manufacturing. So this is Chile export. Of course, copper is Chile's main export, but uh, these new research sectors, uh, three, they are, they are next to copper. They're much better than other sectors. New sectors like the wine, fruit, forest. So they are not domestic consumption, but leading exporting sector. Okay. Malaysia too. Malaysia is known for manufacturing. Electronics, is electric. But it's still declining recently. Whereas new sectors are catching up. They are the who are based on petroleum product, palm oil, rubber. Okay. So this shows that these new sectors are becoming export engines of this economy. That's why they making dollars and they are making keep catching up. Okay. So they are contributing uh, trade balance surplus. These are the, they are the uh, making trade surplus of this Chile economy, mm -hmm. next to mine. Professor, sorry, <laughs> but like yeah. in the Chile case, uh, they have the resource-based uh, all known um, renewable uh, resource. So in, in some time, it's gonna be over, right? Because uh, oh, what I mean- Chile, yeah, this yeah. mining, mining is copper. So this is not that reliable resources. 
into export because of subject to price fluctuation. Is that what you mean? Yes, because uh, if there yeah. is a from mining, like this sort, yeah, sort yeah. of a mineral resource, one day is going to be yeah. over. So yeah, yeah. That is that's not why, like permanent. Yeah. That's right. That's why I'm thinking, saying this is uh, alternative to that such mineral. So these are the, the export based on this wine, forestry, fruit, and fish, including salmon. So this is most stable, newly emerging uh, export engines of Chile rather than uh, old engine of my, mining copper. Okay. Exactly as you said. Okay. So in Chile cases, still mining is biggest dollar earning sources, but this trend is catching up actually. That means these are, they are the uh, worker create new dollar money for Chile. Okay. They are almost like manufacturing or processed uh, resources. Okay. That means high value added. Okay. In Malaysia trade balance, uh, this uh, contribution by electronic electronics, but more by this uh, new, new mineral sector, petroleum product, palm oil, and rubber. Rubber product is like condom. Okay, so uh, some graph, but well, let me skip. So the key factor is that they are able to promote local ownership in this sector. That is a role for industry policy. Okay, so let me go to, oh, this is one important. This is the palm oil export of Malaysia. Early days, they exporting crude palm oil. But that part become zero, replaced by processed palm oil. It means more high value. This is important. Um, Indonesia, still, this crude palm oil part is biggest part of uh, Indonesian case. Malaysia, different. This part become is more uh, majority of the export. Okay. And printing story. Okay, So in Malaysian cases, they try to promote palm oil by promotion. But Europe said they charge tariff against Malaysian uh, processed palm oil, but no tariff on crude palm oil. Very interesting. <laughs> so that means Europeans say, okay, Malaysia don't export processed palm oil, you guys export only crude palm oil. Okay. So Malaysia charge export duties on crude palm oil. They're saying that if you export crude palm oil from Malaysia, you have to pay taxes. So this is discouraging crude palm oil export, but encouraging process palm oil against European tariff. So this fight, fight between two countries, okay? Because Europe has ownership of uh, first palm oil company using Malaysian palm oil. So they don't want Malaysian company to rise as a process palm oil company. So Malaysia nationalized existing small palm oil company and they exercise takeover of foreign ownership. Wholesale takeover London Stock Exchange. They of British own plantation in Malaysia. Very uh, interesting event. Okay. So this is one way to uh, intervene by state. If there are no such intervention, they will be keep competing against uh, British company. Then after that, they support R&D, fiscal incentive for value addition. They set up Palmer Research Council, oil palm genetic laboratory, so innovation act. Okay. So this is basis for Malaysian success, relying as a global palm oil exporters. It is not done by market. It is all local ownership, local initiative, and so on. Okay. So this can be lesson for other countries uh, trying to promote the locally owned businesses. It's not party. It's a fight, global competition, involving hostile takeover. So in petroleum, palm oil, rubber, all there is a local owner. Whereas Malaysian IT sectors still foreign owned, dominated by multinationals. So it's catching up a very slow speed. Example of middle income state. Okay. In uh, Chile cases, uh, 
uh, we have this Boris salmon fruit at the new growth engine chili. And uh, in the case of salmon, you know, now salmon is now bigger exportable chili, but in chili sea, salmon was not natural specimen. So salmon was not living in Chilean sea. It is done by science. They one day start grow salmon by scientific method. Technology from Norway, technical transfer. Expanded farming of various salmon species and they succeeded being able to cultivate salmon in Chilean sea. It's a newly intervention by public sciences. <laughs> it's not done by market. Okay. And they uh, promoted uh, local nation companies from four to more than 200 companies, which is in big contrast mining, still foreign dominated, weak domestic linkages, not export oriented. Okay. So, uh, very interesting story of uh, in two countries in different sector, all requires public intervention using innovation and science. This against uh, natural resource based comparative advantage because it is done by artificially created. Okay, very interesting. Okay. So, uh, for this salmon or local ownership, but mining still foreign dominant. So, uh, limitation in degree of domestic valuability. Okay. But this sectors mostly there are some foreign but still domestic company more dominant so they are were able they are the who are creating more domestic value okay. so uh, we discuss possibly to escaping middle income trap through resource based development so in this, this post pandemic world the resource sector very important more promising than manufacturing because resource sector you mean you rely more on locally owned, locally available resources. That's more safe, safer in this uh, post pandemic period. Okay. And resource sector means, again, uh, low entry barrier sector, like a short cycle sector, low entry developer, because you rely on something on your own locally available resources, that means lower entry barrier sector. Okay. And not free market, but industrial policy has play, played a role uh, in building capabilities in these sectors, as you discussed, salmon and so on. Okay, domestic ownership. Without local ownership, nothing can be accumulated. Okay. In Malaysian electric electronics, MNC dominated. Okay. But Malaysian auto sectors not success, locally owned, but uh, they're not export market. So no discipline from world market. So auto sector is also somewhat um, a mixed cases. Okay. That means local ownership plus export orientation is the key to success. But local ownership also export because without export, you cannot export, uh, expect discipline from world market. What is auto sectors or promotion or no discipline? So they're spoiled. Okay. So uh, that's it. Okay. So now we have a more more uh, thing to discuss. Okay. Oh, we have uh, some comment question from chatting box. Uh, sorry. Uh, okay. So yeah. Uh, first one, uh, the technological development introduced a cycle, as you showed Korea. Would you any any close to two slides or that? Uh, GBC cycle. Uh, I talk about. Non linearity like uh, in out in, but somewhat different from uh, cycle. When I say cycle, I talk about uh, uh, in different contexts. Catch up cycle means that, in the case, cycle means that leadership change from 
incumbent to new rising companies and again to new companies. There I talk about cycle, but in GBC cases, rather than cycle, uh, I used to say that in and in out in again this uh, nonlinear pattern rather than just uh, the motor vector pattern or linear pattern. So somewhat different from uh, cycle concept and allocation about Russia. So next year Russia will ban export to raw round rows. It was framed as a step to improve technological change of industry so that timber companies will have uh, to improve their technical base and moving away from resource based model. Some export claim that instruction measures are foolish, but because this will upset trade and good. Well, my opinion um, is that it is good move. That means uh, Russia trying to have a more local bell edit rather than export raw rows. It actually has the case of uh, Chile, the, the Malaysian, the palm, palm oil. Yeah? So, uh, but, but export ban is one thing, but you got to have plan. Next plan is to uh, have a more uh, domestic bell edit by developing the, the low processing industry. So ban is one thing, ban is starting, but that, that, that's an end, that's the beginning of active police support to have a more uh, low process within Russia. Okay. So in Italy, it might have difficult, as you show in the case of Korean company, after this uh, upgrading effort, the sale decreased. So Malaysian low export industry might have difficult short term, for a couple of, couple of years, but if you keep uh, making consistent effort, that you might have a long-term plan. So that means you have a long-term plan, long-term commitment. Don't change in the middle. In Latin America, they tried, after some years, they changed back. That happened in some cases of uh, Brazil. They tried industrial police, after some years, they give up. If you push, push it long-term enough, that's the case of China, then uh, this hardship might be overcome. Yeah? That's why it takes a long-term effort. It's not short term, short -term uh, uh, phenomenon. Okay. Any others? Uh, Who is Kim? Is Korea another Korean? Kim? Kim oh, Sang Lee? I'm not Korean, I'm a Singaporean. Oh, Kim Sang Lee. Yeah. So, um, uh, <laughs> I actually have some questions on, uh, okay, on the slides you give, right? So, from my understanding that you truly say that if a com uh, like a country, they are going through the GVC, it's best for them to go in first. And after that, to get out to be domestical and they start doing their own um, yeah. manufacturing and start marketing and stuff. And this will be a good growth for the uh, country itself. So if yeah. they don't do that, they will get stuck in this trap and they will never grow at all. This yeah. is what I understand from your lecture. Yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, I'm, I'm not saying they stop growing. They're still growing, but with less profit domestic, or less pie from the GBC participation. Mm -hmm. So you are growing, but somewhat slowly, uh, like the auto sectors in uh, Thailand, so mixed success. It's not failure, but mixed success with a very slow speed of catching up with the US in some years. Mm -hmm. So um, just one question on, uh, you know that the, in Korea, they have this company called the Loti uh, Corporation. Um, Lotte? Yeah, yeah, Lotte. So Lotte, yeah. Are, they, are they considered uh, OEM or OB? Oh, no, no. Lotte is a very strong brand, Lotte. Lotte is a big now brand globally. But I see that they actually do lots of different stuff. They actually produce, they have hotels, they have, um, they also sell goods and stuff like this. So that's why I was quite 
confused what are they doing. They do too many different um, stuff. Yeah. 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 Lotte is so Lotte is different from Samsung, LG, or Hyundai. Uh, Lotte is less manufacturing oriented. So Lotte is strong in like uh, retails, shopping, and but they still have uh, some manufacturing affiliate companies. So Lotte Chemical and then. So they make many small like uh, chewing gums, many food stuff, all based on manufacturing. Yeah. Okay. So Lotte is more diversified into some um, hotels, apartment, but they still do some uh, their own value creation with the manufacturing base. Mm -hmm. So as you know, all current companies used to be OEM in the 1960s, 70s, and so on, but they gradually upgraded into high-end segment in the same sector. Also keep moving into new sector with more high value. So it's two kind of upgrading. Upgrading the same sector from low end to high end, upgrading into new sectors. You know, Samsung, most high tech company in Korea, but in old days, 50s, 60s, guess what are Samsung's main product? What are Samsung making selling in 1960s, 50s? Yeah. Mm. Let me guess. I'm not sure. Television. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody? Yeah. Or fridge. Huh? I think it's electronics, right? They started. Is it electronics? I'm not sure. Actually. No, no, no. They enter electronics only seven. Mm. Fifty, sixties. They are doing refined sugar, sugar refined, mm -hmm. and clothing. The only 70 they entered consumer electronics making TV, radio. Then 80s they entered this um, telecom equipment and uh, uh, memory memory chip. Mm -hmm. Then 90s they entered this mobile phone making and and so on. So it is a uh, that's what I mean. Uh, Intersector operating. They keep moving into new sector. Okay. Now so guess. Functioning upgrading you talked about, they have to branch out and do different rather than just stay in one sector. Yeah, yeah. So, two upgrading. Intra sector upgrading means upgrading same sector, the other is inter sector upgrading, moving into new sector. Okay. Guess what is Samsung's new sectors for promotion nowadays? Nowadays, Samsung. I only know they are doing the AI. I, I recently saw is it AI? They have this artificial AI is uh, input to business. Which business they, they want to do? They are always after this cell phone, after cell phone. Mm, I only know they are very good in recently it's all on the handphones and stuff, smartphones and after then that I'm not very sure. Yeah, that's all we know. But anybody? Where does something put new money into investment to what? AI and I guess it's uh, micro microelectronics. Semiconductors, that's uh, their current business. Yeah. yeah, they do chips and memory. I know that. Yeah. Conductors. Yeah. yeah, that's their current business. But what's their next? Samsung keep asking, what's next? For five years, 10 years, like they have been before from refined sugars, clothing, consumer electronics, telecom. And so what's next for Samsung? It is long cycle, such as bio, medicine, medical equipment. Mm -hmm. If you go to Incheon Airport in Seoul, huge factory called Samsung Biologics. It's o ODM of making medicine. So Samsung making medicine for European the brand owner. So it's, it's, that's Samsung next business. Bio is something next. It's long cycle. So something is moving from short cycle to long cycle. In short cycle, easy to catch up. So easy to caught up by somebody else, like from China. Mobile phone, something is soon caught up by China. So something moving into new business, which is bio. Biosimilars and ODM production of biomedicine for European company. Or they're trying to develop their own medicine. So that's why I call short to long cycle transition is Samsung's next business. But so Samsung but doesn't envy Apple. Samsung envy, uh, they envy us to be like European bus. Bus is long cycle. K 
time trial material. Long stack means no, no, no easy to catch up. Fast is as a leader in the industry more than 100 years. No way to catch up. High entry there. So Samsung want to become like a European uh, long cycle sector based company. So they don't have to worry about being caught up by Samsung. But as a late comer, when they go to this biomedical, uh, isn't that they will face lots of challenges and will they yeah. also face like yeah. some kind of discrimination because they are fighting against some big brands? Mm. And yeah, exactly. High entry barrier. So they're trying to on the hand, make try to make same transition as before, like OEM to ODM to OBM. So Samsung is nine now in medicine. So they are doing production and design. But they don't have brand. They don't have no original medicine. It's all owned by European incumbent. So European incumbent has, uh, has produced. The produce is done by Samsung. The same upgrading from OEM, ODM, OBM. Samsung will be like uh, in the future OBM, but not yet. On the other hand, this corona pandemic gave Samsung big impetus, big momentum for opportunity. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, uh, well, it's happening to many Korean companies. Lotte, SK, LG, all trying to move into bio. So for the next couple of years, for Korea, bio is the hot thing. That means Korea moving from short cycle to long cycle. Mm -hmm. And Corona pandemic was a big momentum for Korea moving into this area. Because otherwise, market is very tight, closed. So with the Corona pandemic, the huge demand for bio product uh, emerges. So it turned out to be good opportunity for Korean company moving into bio sector. Very fortunate. Otherwise, entry barrier is still very high. So some entry barrier some are opened up due to this corona pandemic situation. I understand. But um, I want to share one experience I have. Um, I was in Vietnam like five years ago. I think I was there for two years. So I do notice that um, lots of Korean entries in, in Vietnam. So like you said, they were there doing manufacturing on the semiconductors, on the chips. But I also do notice that they enter to build um, apartments. So there's lots of um, different apartments that are actually built by Korean companies too in Vietnam itself. Any other intervention or comment to the back? So the uh, key message is that uh, GBC is a initial place for learning, but eventually you got to have a strategic plan to promote more domestic value added or domestic ownership. That's the uh, good idea for long-term success. Otherwise, you might face some difficulty. Although there is a room for more gradual catching up, not so fast, but in a steady manner. But it also requires some effort to build more local labor forces, either skillful labor forces, upgrading labor forces, so that MNC stay there with the uh, highly upgraded labor force as case of uh, some extent in auto sectors in Thailand and some sectors in Penang, Malaysia. Okay. Then this to upgrade, uh, to make it happen, you got to have more local innovation, local R&D, that's the important. Okay. In terms of innovation, uh, in catching up there, you got to try first short cycle sectors. IT manufacturing or like India IT services, that's also a cycle. Or resource-based sectors using more local abilities too. Okay, then long-term goal is moving into eventually long cycle technology sector. Okay. That's the uh, summary of my uh, talk. Okay. Okay, I guess uh, we spend about Two hours and uh, maybe uh, that's enough. Okay. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much.
Thank you. 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 Thank you.